everybody. I'm here with one of my fellow favorite outdoor YouTube channels. This is Terry from TLK Outdoors. TLK Outdoors. When you get an opportunity, make sure you switch on over to his page. I'll put a link in the uh, description, right? That'll work. You doing mostly trout fishing? Yeah, um, a, lot of, a lot of trout fishing. Uh, we do have a couple uh, hunting videos on there. but Nice. Um, we got really, like, really close to Barkley Lake out here. You guys fish in Barkley, Eddie? Um, every once in a while, mainly Kentucky Lake, we, we fish out there. So nice. we do love, some love Kentucky Lake, man. Oh, yeah. Beautiful place and definitely a place to check out. Definitely, uh, you know, some world-class bass fishing in there, some world-class uh, catfish fishing. Hey, now, do you get out there and do any of that shell fishing for bass? I know that's like the big thing is getting off on the ledges. You know where that drop off is. I, uh, we're more bank fishermen, um, but we like to we like to hit them cove areas and you know come along come along the bank line that when the water gets up in the summertime and hit them reeds, they uh, they tend to blow up pretty good there. Uh, my cousin Jason has a story of catching his biggest bass off a pier out there at Kentucky Lake with a bluegill head. Like there's a bunch of people out there, nobody's catching nothing. Right. He's basically out there catfishing, and he just drags in this five pound bass. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the, that was actually uh, the same with me. Um, not this past year, two years ago, I was throwing some cut bait out there and actually hooked into a bunch of big gar. Um, nice. The the gar definitely start tearing it up. I just you know my favorite fishing trip involved a gar. I took my my nephew, who was in kindergarten at the time, to the Ohio River. I knew they were going to move away. Mm -hmm. So, like, every day I was taking them. You know, every day we would go for an hour after school or two right. hours or whatever, right? And uh, just trying to get in that, that time with him before he moved. And finally, and, and he was just, you know, he was just a kid. I'd let him play, and he'd, you know, sword fight with sticks and, you know, whatever, <laughs> right? He'd get bored. And uh, anyway, so one day that big catfish rod just started doubling over I reached up and set the hook. I said, bring my phone, bring my phone. It's before I was doing YouTube or anything. And he brings me my phone and I just start taking, I hand him the rod. He was shocked, you know, but <laughs> he fought that thing like a champ, you know, uh, uh, gar, nice, you know, three foot, you know, to be, you know, the, the thing was as long as he was. It was just, <laughs> I just, I've had a lot of great fishing trips, but helping him to catch, you know, what at least his biggest fish to today and probably will be for a while. He's more into basketball now than fishing. Uh, anyway, so I want you guys to remember TLK Outdoors. TLK Outdoors. And uh, at TLK Outdoors, when's the best time to fish? Anytime. Thanks for watching. So, uh, have you done much trout fishing, Kyle? Uh, no. So I'm taking you out to my secret spot. I guess so. <laughs> I tried to fish the Cumberland River and didn't catch anything. You know, my, my, I've had one successful trout fishing trip, so now I'm an expert, right? Okay. Uh, but my, my, the, the whole thing of my success for the last trip was in the planning. Is I, I just looked on the Kentucky DNR website and seen where and when they were going to stock trout, and that was the closest place on the day that I had available. Well, it was down here at Crank Casey Creek. So I was just like, okay, that's where I'm going. And fortunately, Tommy's going to go ahead and fish a little this year. So I didn't have to uh, just make the trip down there by myself. It's always nice to have somebody to fish with. Yeah. It's also nice sometimes just to go by yourself. I agree with that. I uh, enjoy being alone sometimes when I'm fishing. Sometimes, that, sometimes I go just for that reason to truly be alone. And honestly, like fishing in a boat, I'm gonna. I like bank fishing alone sometimes, but in the boat, I think I enjoy it probably for different reasons. Because, like, when I go bank fishing by myself, it's really an opportunity to, you know, kind of sort things out, you know, whatever's going on in my life, you know, get a chance to... And, I, and I'm talking about, like, sitting and watching poles waiting for catfish to bite, you know. Yeah. You get a chance to kind of just sort through your problems and take a... It's almost a meditative deal. Boat fishing by myself, I get to set my own pace, I get to... 
know, that that's one of the uh, drawbacks of fishing in a boat with somebody else, especially if you're not... When you're trying to learn to fish together, you know, you can both be into fishing, but fishing is not always about the same thing. And can both have totally different ideas of where you want to fish, what speed you want to fish. You know, it can be uh, frustrating for both people. I had one guy I fished with, uh, my buddy Leaf. And man, we were... What a great name. Leaf. Uh, Leaf, Leaf Erickson. Yeah, awesome name. His, his, his dad, uh, their, their dad, I was uh, friends with his older brother growing up. And, you know, he, when Leaf was pretty young back then, you know, he was like three. You know, I made friends with his older brother when I was in first grade. His older brother's name is Bravis. And I don't think Bravis has a middle name. But, uh, yeah, Leaf, pretty, pretty good guy. But anyway, you know, we fished at the same pace. And one thing I learned probably a little later at that time, but like being a co-angler trying to bass fish, you know, being the guy in the back of the boat, but, you know, assuming the other guy's on the front with the trolling motor, yeah. is my advice to the person in the back of the boat is to fish. Don't try and fish slow. Even if the guy in the front of the boat is fishing a, a finesse, slow style, even if they're fishing as slow as a wacky worm, if you're, if you're in the back of the boat, you should just about, uh, assuming that you're not, you know, anchoring down and that sort of thing. But if you're just out bass fishing, if you're the guy in the back of the boat, you should definitely be fishing something that's cast and reel. You know, cast and twitch and reel, whatever. Because uh, I think you're asking too much of the guy in the front to try and put you in this spot and give your lure time to hit the bottom and let it sit and twitch, you know, like where you would fish a shaky head from the back. Yeah, uh, I would think you know a spinner bait, crank bait, you know something something along that line is going to be more advantageous to both people, regardless of what the guy in the front of the boat's doing. Not only did I experience that in person, but uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think uh, Mike Mike Iconelli's biography he mentions he he talks a lot about being a coin. Like the other big piece of advice I give to people that are riding along with people in boats, bass boats or otherwise is don't ever feel like you're offending the guy if you ask him if the plug's in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Like if Everyone you do does that. nothing else, ask him if the plug's in the boat because the guy that's bringing the boat is thinking about so many things. You know, it's because if you're the co-angler, usually you're not you're not the one that's dictating where you're going to fish, what style it's going to be fished, you know, what lake that's going to be fished. Let me pull that down a little. I just really don't want them. There we go. I like to be able to see out the window. No problem. Uh, one of the first pieces of fishing advice that I'm going to give to anybody is before anything else is planning your trip. It's like knowing where, because a person should know where they're going to go and then, you know, and at that point you can start figuring out what type of fishing you're going to do, what type of fish you're going to try and catch, you know, whether you use a lures, live bait, how much time, how much time you have. So how, how did you guys even come up with the plan to go to Minnesota a couple crazy 20-something-year-old kids? Well, a lot of stupidity. Really? Yeah. We I'm utilize sorry. we utilize our stupidity. Like used it to your advantage. Yeah. But also we just can't came up with a plan of like a general area at uh, uh, Oyster Lake that we wanted to go to. Which we did make it to. But You did? Yeah. Okay. But not in the best some of the best terms. Uh but you just you figure out what's in your area, and then I like to try to like plan to be flexible. Just oh, saying I'm gonna fish just for this and this and this. And I bring I don't bring enough stuff to just fish for one thing really well. I generally just bring like general stuff.
up so that way I can change my tactics or for whatever. Well, the thing the thing is, is most predator fish will attack lures. You know, it, it's yeah. it's really common to catch catfish on uh, you know crankbaits and that sort of thing. Yeah, know, jigs. It's you know, so so I definitely understand that being flexible in your you know, you're just going to catch fish and kind of have the experience. Uh, was there much of an experience while you were there? Yeah, Kyle and I had to spoon all night. <laughs> well, you know, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of that movie. It was Seth Green and uh, up a Jax. Without a, up a creek, without a paddle. Yeah, yeah, without a paddle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll take it you were the little spoon. No, Kyle's a little spoon. <laughs> uh, Kyle, don't let him make you the little spoon. Please make him take turns. No, we got stuck out there with when the uh, winds were like 50 miles an hour and the waves were three and a half feet high. Hang on, what time of year did you go? May. Okay. That's right. It was May, wasn't it? Maybe. Yeah, it was May. Yeah. So, so you checked the weather and stuff before you went. Man, that was yeah. a freak gale. Man, nobody did. Yeah, but also Minnesota, Minnesota weather is like constantly changing, and it's it's. If you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Kind of like Indiana. Gotcha. But magnified and more varied. <laughs> yeah. Way harsher, 